All right, guys, welcome back. In this video, we want to solve this static the indeterminate beam using the three moment equation. We want to be able to draw the shear force diagram, the bending moment diagram, and find the reactions. So you might recognize this, uh, this beam, actually, if you've been watching my other videos. I solved this exact same problem using the slope deflection method. So if you want to compare and just like confirm that you get the same answer either way, uh, check out the description. I'll put a link to it down there. Or also you can click up here on this bubble thing, and that'll take you off to that video as well. But uh, let's go forwards using a three moment equation. So first of all, like anytime you're doing a three moment equation, look at each span that you have and draw the bending moment diagram for that span as if it was simply supported and carrying those loads. And then we want to go ahead and identify the distance of the centroid to the outsides of those spans and then also the areas under these curves. So if we think now about what the three moment equation really does is it compares the internal moments like three internal moments across two spans. So when we think about that the internal moments at um, we're gonna have MA, uh, we're gonna have MB, and we're gonna have MC. So MA is going to be an unknown right now, MB is going to be an unknown. But if we look at this and we think about MC, well, we can determine that the internal moment here is zero because it's basically on the end of a span uh, with, a, with a roller support there. So that is going to be zero. So if we write the three moment equation ABC, then the first thing that we can do is notice that because EI is constant and EI is in every single denominator, that we can remove that variable from each term. And now what we can do is we can just substitute in all of the values that we have and we're going to get this expression MA plus 4MB is equal to negative 437.5, which is good, but we have two unknowns and one equation now. So what we have to do is we come back up to the original drawing and basically what we want to do is we are going to look at what's beyond basically this um, this fixed reaction is so we kind of what we do is we imagine that we just like virtually extend the beam into the wall here to some arbitrary point. Let's just label that point Z. You can label this point whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you. And uh, the length that we extend into the wall doesn't actually matter because what we're going to do is we're just going to assume that inside this wall or basically beyond this rigid connection, that uh, this section or this span is going to have an infinite moment of inertia. And you'll see that the length and like everything else just cancels out. So what we wanna do is we want to treat this basically as a three span beam that goes for span what this span is ZA, the next span is AB, and the next span is BC. So what we do now is we apply the three moment equation across the spans ZA and AB, and, uh, and then we're going to compare that or we're going to generate another equation here. So let's go down here and uh, we'll draw our three or we'll write a three moment equation for the span ZAB. So you'll notice there's some stuff in here like the area of ZA and uh, the X bar of ZA, and we don't actually have that because we never drew that. We only have, uh, let's go up a little further, um, we only have the area for AB and the X bars for AB and the area for BC. So we didn't draw a little uh, area di bending moment diagram over on this side, but you're gonna see that we don't actually need it because if, if uh, the moment of inertia I ZA um, is equal to infinity, which is what we're going with. That means that all these EI terms for EI ZA are going to be equal to infinity. And basically anytime we have infinity in the denominator of a fraction, then that whole term is going to zero. So this whole term here is going to go to zero. Uh, this term here also will go to zero. Uh, this term here goes to zero. And this is an important one because this is where we had A ZA and X bar ZA, so we don't need that. And another thing just to notice is that when we're talking about X bar AB in this case, um, it's all, we're always coming from the outside of the spans that we're looking at. So really, we are considering X bar AB right now to be coming from this side and going in, and uh, X bar AB. But because this problem, uh, because this load was right in the center, then these two are the same. Now, if this load was off center, then this X bar AB would be different than this one. So just be careful that you're always coming from the outsides of the spans that we're considering uh, when we're using the three moment equation. All right, so let's just rewrite this uh, without these terms that we've crossed out. And because it's in every single denominator uh, on both sides of the equation, then we can really, we can just cancel that out uh, or just erase it. And we're left with this much simpler expression. So what we can do is we can just really fill this in two MA times LAB, that was, uh, that was 10. So this is two MA times 10. Um, plus MB LAB, so MB times, that was also 10, 
and uh, this was negative 6 times 625 times 5 over 10. And if we simplify this, we get what do we have 20MA plus 10MB, and that is equal to uh, negative 1875. And then we can also reduce that just a little bit again, and we get 2MA uh, plus MB is going to be equal to negative 187.5. All right, so now we have two equations and two unknowns, and you can either solve this by just simple substitution or using a two by two augmented matrix. And uh, we're gonna find out that MA is equal to negative 44.643, and MB is equal to negative 98.214. And those are the internal moments right at those reactions, basically at these points. So now we know we have MA, and B, and we already knew that MC was equal to zero. So I'm gonna pause the video here and uh, we're gonna finish off the video by drawing the shear force diagram, minimum diagram, and finding the reactions in part two. So guys, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next video where we finish up this problem.